لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praise is due to Allah, and as such, we should praise Him, seek His help, and seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which, res- which results from our deeds. For whomsoever Allah has guided, none can misguide, and whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. Inna asdaq al-hadithi kitab Allah wa khayra hadhi hadhi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al-muri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fil naar Indeed, the most truthful form of speech is the Book of Allah. And the best source of guidance, the guidance brought by Muhammad And the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion. For indeed, every innovation in religion is a source of misguidance. And all misguidance leads ultimately to the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, in our previous khutbah, we spoke about Tawheed and Salah. And how Tawheed is manifest in Salah. That Salah represented the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after knowing who he is. Tawheed is about knowing who Allah is. And for that knowledge to be considered real, to be considered faith in Islam, then that knowledge has to be implemented. Because the classical definition of faith in Islam is belief in the heart expressed on the tongue and acted upon by the body parts. That faith in Islam is not just a thought, a concept. It is the implementation of that concept in human life. Because were faith merely knowledge of Allah, then Satan would have been among the greatest of the believers. Satan, Iblis, who had been elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among the angels because of certain deeds which he did, righteous deeds. Yet, within him, were the seeds of disbelief which became evident when he was given the test of bowing in honor before Adam. Not bowing in worship, but bowing in honor. His reality was exposed. So though he had the knowledge he had clear, a clear understanding of Allah. That knowledge untranslated into action didn't benefit him. And Allah referred to him as a disbeliever. So, as we said, Tawheed was the basis of the faith. The basis of Islam. And its implementation after the 
declaration of faith was Salah. And we discussed its implications. In this khutbah, we are looking at the other side. Shirk and Salah. Because, like everything, it may be used for good or it may be used for evil. And Salah, while being the primary act that the human being can do, expressing his submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can also be the worst evil that one can do in expressing submission, belief, worship of other than Allah. So, Salah, when we look at Salah externally, there are aspects of the Salah that we all should be aware of. Internally, there are aspects likewise that we should be conscious of. Externally, the Salah should be done as the Prophet ﷺ did it. Because he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you saw me pray. Now, none of us saw him pray. So it means what? It means pray as I am described to have prayed in the authentic narrations of the Sunnah. That's what it means. Not as my father might have prayed or as is the common custom in our area, the traditions of our people. No, it is pray as it was authentically reported from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to have prayed. That's what is required. It's a basic external requirement. And of course, some people say, well, you know, what if you do a little bit here, you do a little bit there, it's slightly changed here, slightly changed there. Surely Allah is not going to, you know, make a big deal about that. Isn't it what's important is what is in one's heart? Well, if that's the case, then why did the Prophet ﷺ say, pray as you saw me pray? 